This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the chairman and CEO of F3 Uranium, Mr. Dev Rundawa. Dev, how are you today? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. It's great to be chatting with you. Listen, it's great to have you back on. The last time we spoke, I think Uranium was stuck somewhere in the $40 to $50 range. Both you and I yeah. were really excited about the supply demand fundamentals yeah. and all that's happened since then is a straight shot to almost a hundred dollars a pound. And I think, you know, you and I chatted off air a little bit. I think both of us think that's going to prove conservative. So before we get to F3, can we talk sure. about the uranium space? We've been waiting for this market for a sure. long time. Absolutely. Yeah, we have been preaching to the choir now for how long that the price of uranium, it did not matter to the price of what it takes to run a nuclear reactor. So uranium could go, we used to say 30 to 50, 70, oh my gosh, maybe 100. Well, we're almost there. And then I've heard from a very conservative individual in Asia, and he says he won't be surprised it's 150 this year. And I'm thinking to myself, that's, an, that's an incredible. But then he said, it won't move the dial. When the billing comes out, when people get their bill for their electricity, it doesn't move the dial because that's a small part of nuclear reactor, unlike coal, right? Double the price of coal, the cost of, the cost of energy goes double up right there. That's not the case. So we, we still got the best ahead of us, I believe, in uranium. I, I, listen, I, I have nothing but um, positive uh, sentiments about that estimate. And I think 150 and you mentioned it, you alluded to it, is conservative. I think it's going to overshoot. Let's talk about yeah. the disconnect between the equities and the spot price. Because right. listen, the spot price is surging. The equities went through a 9 to 12 month consolidation that right. frankly is still not over, right? We're still seeing that. And I think that's the opportunity. Right. And that's why I reached out. Yeah. Absolutely. You've nailed it. You know what the other commodities have been seeing, we are now seeing this in uranium. We're seeing a direct connect. You know, normally we would see a jump in the price of uranium. Boom. Stocks jump up. We're not seeing that. But the, the reality is this is not um, a short term move. You've got three and a half billion people in the world that don't have enough energy. We're going to need lots of energy that it has base load. So number one, the fundamentals are there. Gold, it's about hedge. So to me, I think um, absolutely, we're, I think you'll see the gap close. In fact, you're seeing it in the last couple of days, you know, when then we made an announcement was made about the U.S. government, you know, actually taking steps towards their promises. Boom. All the stocks have since then gone up, you know, I would say, wow, 10 percent. That's pretty good. And so I think there is a disconnect, but we have a huge fundamental underlying all of this that I think will connect, we'll see a connection again. Let's talk specifically about F3 and why F3 should matter to people. Well, I mean, for, first of all, like we need energy. Boom. We've got to have it. Number two, we want, the world wants clean energy. And only, if you, and unfortunately, unfortunately, renewables have not delivered the dream that they were supposed to have. And it's only one place you can go to get clean base load power, and that's nuclear power. Mm. So we need power, clean power. But So where does F3 fit in? Well, everything is about grade. There's only one place in the world where the uranium is super high grade, that's Canada. So we want power, we want, we want base load power, but we also want it to come from a jurisdiction that's, not, that's easy to work with, not Niger, where... You know, you can have you know, government problems overnight. So lastly, you want to invest in a company that's got different ways to go up. For example, we can go up in the price of uranium like we did yesterday because commodities went up. I also believe we can go up whenever you, you see any kind of overall, not just government or anything else, but also overall in, in the world. So you're seeing the different ways as uranium price go up. But the one that exploration companies really do it is that my our group of guys have made three discoveries right so our stock can go up if we hit another hole we are drilling at a1 and b1 right now so 
like we hit one of those areas, bang, the stock will go up. So the stock can go up because the overall market's going up or, you know, uranium prices are going up, but also we are drilling. So we've got this duality, this torque of having ability for the stock to go up just in that alone. And the third torque that we offer, whether you believe, you know, different analysts, whether you think, you know, we've got 17 million pounds, you believe them or you believe, yeah. we can't give numbers, but we can just tell you what other people say, but we know there's pounds in the ground. So F3 has pounds in the ground, continuing to drill and grow. That would be a great acquisition for a company who doesn't have an incubator, doesn't have a stream of projects behind them. They just got the one. And so you see, we've all seen the Lausanne curve, right? It sits at the bottom. Like there's no new, somebody developing a uranium asset in the F Athabasca, they got nothing to do for about 10 years. That's very active. So one thing that would be helpful for them is to have a group of uh, exploration assets that they can continue to show blue sky. But you'd be shocked how many companies didn't do that. So F3 can go up because uranium prices can go up. We can drill, hit a hole, boom. And thirdly, we're a great, I think we make a great acquisition target because we've got some uranium in the ground. More importantly, whole lot of land. We have 16 projects. So we have a lot of upside on that end. So I think though those three reasons, okay, I don't know any other junior stocks that offer that. Hmm. <laughs> it sounds like there's conversations that are being had behind the scenes. I know you're not going to comment on that, Dave. So Dev, so I'll leave that alone. Yeah. But listen, you're spending They're always six, happening. <laughs> you're spending yeah, 16 million on drilling. Always happening. Yeah, no, no, no. And yeah, I we, it, and we, I know it's an active space yeah. right now. And I'm look, you know, luckily I'm privy to some of the whispers, but that's all it is. And at the end of the yeah. day, nothing happens until it happens. Clearly, you're in the oh, mix it, to potentially it, get taken out, right, clearly. Dev? Absolutely. It's somebody, look, either you're growing or you're going backwards. It's one of the two. And, oh, no, I mean, you saw the, you, yeah, the, well, it's obvious. Look, look at AFA, 68% um, premium they got taken out. That's pretty sweet. You know, 68%. Um, and, and they get paper. So it's not like they're leaving the game. So it's a good acquisition. We need more guys like AFA. We need more, we need more aggressive buyers out there. Because to me, there can only be so many guys produced, so many mills are going to be built. And I think the Athabasca obviously is the place to be, period. Dev, you've been in this space for a long time. What do you see happening in the uranium sector for the next couple of years? Oh, uh, man, this is the most exciting. Yeah, it, it, I, I'm still like you in shock. Uranium almost $100. Well, it tells me it goes to 150 All these predictions that we've been seeing, you know, um, they, they're, they're going to come true. But, you know, we've been pounding a pulpit now for what? You know, a decade, <laughs> maybe yeah. more, you know, and finally it's happening. So it's nice to be right. But, you know, um, at the end of the day, I'm waiting like you for a connection between the stock price and the price of uranium. That's what I'm waiting for. Like everybody else, I'm waiting for us to hit a drill hole. Um, I know that um, people are saying, okay, you've got the JR zone. The question for, People will be asking, is this a zone or a system? Based on what we've seen, we see a system. Like the amount of boron we saw at the B1 at the unconformity tells me that it's a system. So the question is, where is this next blob of uranium that's going to add 20, 30, 40% to the stock? That's what investors want to know, and I want to know. But investors need to be comfortable. Know that Ray and Sam have made three discoveries before no one's made two before. They've made three. Hmm. So the project's in great hands. We're going to spend almost $16 million in the ground over between now and the summer. You're well-funded, great technical team. And that's just one property. We've got 16 of them. I don't think it's a coincidence that when I spoke with Ray a few weeks ago, um, he echoed similar sentiments as far as being a takeout target. I think there's probably a rush going on behind the scenes to prove up new discoveries and to grow the existing ones. Um, and 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 look, you know, we we had a good conversation early in 2023, and we talked about how quick sentiment can change in the uranium yeah. space. And F3 has yeah. proven that in spades this year. I'm excited for 2024. Anything to add to that, Dev? 
No, I mean, I, I think this is part of the cycle. I, this is my third cycle. And what happens is you're going to see a bunch of acquisitions. People digest those. Then there's more. You know, that's just the way, you know, whether it was a lithium industry, every industry, this is not unique to uranium. Every industry where there's a big boom, somebody wants to be the leader and somebody has to grow. And that's what they start to do is they, but you want quality assets. And, you know, nobody out there that I can see has drilled, you know, 60% uranium, whether it's one or two meters, nobody's drilled 30, 40, 50% uranium in the last decade. We have. So it's not just an exploration company. It's an exploration company with fantastic results. Looking forward to more results. Looking forward to a busy rest of the year. Looking forward to see if F3 makes it out of 2024 without being taken out. Thanks for the time, Dev. Thank you so much. Hey everybody, Gerardo Del Real here. If you're enjoying the content that you just saw, you can let us know in three simple steps. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and please share across your network and on social media. Take care, everybody.